Hi guys, I'm back with another video and this time I am gonna be showing you around Clip Studio Paint Pro which I bought um, a couple months ago and uh, yeah the dog always takes his time to make noise whenever I'm on this computer but we're just gonna press on so I'm just gonna get a new canvas and start looking around at the kind of features this thing has. Uh, previously, I've been working in a a free trial version of this program, which worked out really well, except that you can't save anything in there. So that was kind of annoying, but understandable. We have all sorts of pens, and unfortunately, I've kind of messed up the layout but it, it doesn't really matter so we've got all these different kinds of pens and you can adjust how soft you want the edges to be, I'll demonstrate this has really soft edges almost like a vector and this one does not have very soft edges at all as you can see it's quite jagged while this one is almost blurred so that's something for you to use when you want to adjust how refined you want your drawing to be uh, we have the gradient setting, and you can either just do the gradient way out and open, or select, and it'll do the gradient only in the selection. There are all these cool features that you can use if you, I don't know, like, feel like cheating. I don't know, is it cheating? So we have all these clothing things, uh, lots of flowers, which include, like, sakura petals something and we have artificial things which is really useful we have barbed wire and rubble this is like my favorite thing because that is just so good looking for the kind of manga that I'm doing fences all this stuff and effects if you're doing like a cute girl speed paint and you want a lot of sparkles and stuff it has that now, I actually have not done much learning about the ruler yet, so I won't be able to teach you about that, even though I understand it's terribly useful. I'm um, going to have to wait until I learn more about that. Now, the, the thing I like most about this program is all the, the stuff it comes with, and when you buy it, I don't think it actually comes with every single thing I have in here. You actually have to go to the site and download it, but it is definitely worth it because if you get this program and it doesn't have all these lovely things for you to work with, it's sort of like, how am I supposed to make all this by myself? How do other people get these incredible tones and things? Like, they it only comes with a few basic tones, but if you download the big packages, it has a lot more really interesting things for you to work with. Also, you get all these incredible cloud backgrounds, and yeah, you can just like take a picture of real clouds and then make it black and white, I guess, but I didn't feel like going to that trouble. So it has all these really incredible backgrounds, so you pretty much never have to make any of your own. And I don't think that's cheating. I <laughs> just can't throw that out there if you feel like, no, I gotta make all my backgrounds by myself. Do you seriously want to make this from scratch? I don't think that I could. So it's very nice of them to put all this in there and you're able to use it. It comes with lots of things to make your manga seem more authentic, like all these sound effects written in katakana and hiragana nice little sound effects things some little effects so uh, to get all these really incredible wood balloons uh, the dog is being fussy again anyways to get all of these incredible wood balloons you have to download the extra packages on the site and the program when you just download it, it pretty much comes with like four or something. It also comes with lots of framing templates, but I actually don't find these all that useful. 
because when I'm planning out a scene, it doesn't really fit into anything that they have provided. Then they have all of these really nice, uh, just random images. And then there is a 3D stuff, which is like really, really, really in-depth and incredible of them to give to us like this. So we have like a street here and houses that we can go into by mistake. And there's also a school in the inside of a train that's going to be useful for me. And all sorts of really, really cool stuff. This is for making a gradient, this paintbrush, paint can tool, and I, I can, I'm just going to go around clicking everything and saying, I can find this really useful and I really like this. Uh, I'm just going to try to say new stuff because I'm just pretty much saying the same thing over and over again. So the animation thing, I'm going to pull up an animation canvas to work with, and we have the timeline down here. And you pretty much just like put in a lot of frames. It's sort of like Toon Boom, except not exactly so refined. So you just like put a lot of frames into the animation folder. And then you can go in and draw. Actually, I think you have to draw outside of the animation folder. Oops. Something is messing up my mouse. Just a sec. Okay, I see. Smaller. Alright, I actually haven't been working with animation in this program very much. But I'm pretty sure that this is how it works. Now, we are on frame one. This I'm just going to make a quick little animation tutorial for whoever finds this interesting. We're on frame one. And to get a new frame, you right click the number or whatever you've called these frames in here. And you can scroll through your options. Now because I want to draw a new frame, I'm going to select two, and now we have this, and then I'm going to select three, draw four, draw, and so on. I haven't been working in this much, so I haven't really learned yet how to make the uh, animation longer. So far, yeah, that's how you animate. timeline and show you some of the nice effects that we have over here. First I'm going to just input an image so that we can see the effect it has on this tree. Hey, Cricket is coming to visit. Hey baby. Okay, Cricket wants to be helpful. So, what we're doing with this is this is a border and so this is useful when you like having a character stand out from like a black background or something and you don't want to go around behind the character yourself and that makes it a lot easier and this is for if you have like a photograph or something and you want to make it in a comic book style you just press this and it automatically does everything for you this one is if you want to make it less detailed and you can just drag these along wherever you want and if you want these to be darker or lighter higher the number the darker it is lower the number the lighter it is and this is actually an effect that I use quite often and this is just like another posterization thing and this is tinting which is also very useful. We can like select the different colors we want it to be and yada yada yada. These I haven't these tabs I haven't really found it use for. And if you want to uh, like move around your workspace, turn it around or something, you can do this and this is reset. This also adjusts it and gives you uh 
more control. This uh, flips it horizontally and back, vertically and back. And these I don't really find very useful at all because I just like to scroll around by myself. So now we are going to look at a really really great pen feature that I was so happy to find because I was a complete beginner in this and my first tries in this program to do digital art they just really really went very badly and I went over this in a previous video but I'm just gonna do it again the stabilization I believe it comes set at about 15 if you set it to zero it translates exactly the kind of lines that you're doing like slow or fast like if you go really fast then uh, it doesn't have as much shakiness along the line but if you're trying to go very slow and be very precise you'll find that the line is very uneven and ugly how to fix this and not to really really make yourself feel like you know nothing about drawing you go over here to stabilization and change the number to something higher now you can draw slowly without shaking much and if you want to have it shake even less go all the way up to 100 and uh, there are different pens and I'm just going to set this one to 102 something's wrong here Okay, uh, my tablet makes this program freeze up sometimes, whatever. So the selection pen is super helpful for if you're like trying to select a part of your drawing. So you can like select a certain part as a pen, or you can use the magic wand. And I'm gonna refer other layers because that's just usually what I have it set to and you can click this and it'll select this and something that I found frustrating was that it was set to this and I didn't know what that meant so I tried to select something else and it deselected my past one but I randomly found out that you could do this and have it select both at once and you can set the selection pen to that as well and select without deleting your previous selection so that is a really nice feature I know I'm saying select over and over and over here is a paintbrush, which is really nice, but I don't use it very often because I just like to be very precise in my drawings. And it gives a nice effect to your drawing if you like doing uh, a more realistic, traditional art feel sort of thing. So that's really nice to use. I haven't figured out how to use the copy stamp yet, but I think I understand the basic principle of it. Unfortunately, I put the copy stamp inside my blend tool, and blend, you just like, can blend colors together, sort of a smearing effect, which I am so glad they had here. I really love using that effect almost way too much, than, way more than I should. So you can just smear things around, give it like an underwater effect. That looks kind of creepy. Hello, Cricket. She's back. You want to say something? Yeah, she really wants a lot of attention right now. Hey, sweetie. Yeah, you're my good girl. But I really gotta finish this video. She's usually pretty supportive of my artwork, but now she's just like grabbing onto my hand and purring into my ear. And anyway, that is pretty much all that I have to show in this quick little tutorial thing. Except for the exporting thing. And this is so nice for me because before I was just like print screening my drawing and so you just go to file export and save as whatever you like usually do PNG and it's all pretty much set up for you so you press OK if it looks good and it shows you what you're going to be saving 
and you can press OK or cancel and you can zoom in and just check to make sure your drawing is right and you press OK and then it's done and I'm gonna show you how to download those extra files so let's do that I think there's actually a website link yeah here it is so I believe it's in downloads Right, uh, I was I came here. I actually found this just because I was looking for a manual, and there's this tab, additional materials, and you can download them individually or whatever. So you just like click download, and then it'll show up in your uh, downloads folder. You unzip them, and then you come over here and you press install material. Now you press. Okay, do not save, whatever, I don't really care. And you sele to select material, you go to downloads, and you have to unzip the zipped files that these will come in, and I've already done it. So here they are, and you just like press one, and then you press install, and it'll install them for you. So that's about it. I hope this video was helpful to you guys. And I'm going to be coming back with some new ones as soon as I learn more about this really good program. And I can't wait till that time. So, don't forget to like and subscribe. And comment. And subscribe some more. I don't know. <laughs> and I'll see you in my next video.